So I'm the uh, Director of Consulting and uh, Project Management in Calgary, and I've been uh, worked on the business side for 40 years in oil and gas. Um, so I think that, um, uh, like the people in the room here, I've done lots of uh, acquisitions, divestitures, mergers over the last several years. So I want to just share some of uh, uh, some tips that I've learned over the years, and I'm sure many of you have. Um, so I'm hoping that you learned something today that I have to bring to the table. Um, the first thing I want to say is that when you're dealing with information, you need to have a good records management program. We all know that, don't we? Right. And I think the other thing is, is that the value of inf information is always estimated in our business when we're working day to day. But when there's an acquisition or, you know, our companies are selling data or they're selling the companies, that's when the value of our assets really come out. Because they're spend companies are spending millions of dollars to not just acquire our companies but also the information to be able to do their daily activities and, and to be able to make those decisions around that information. So I just wanted to stress we are in a very important professional um, <coughs> Uh, position in our companies and you know we don't always get thanked for that so so just to start off um, just get my bearings here so acquisitions um, so records acquired are usually thought of in terms of just finding space well it's a lot more than space uh, when companies are looking at records so again as I mentioned it's really about the information and how it makes decisions in day-to-day -day business for companies. That's how uh, we get competitive in the oil and gas business, is having proper records management and proper records uh, organization. The role play in business operations is overlooked. I just mentioned that. And lack of due care can result in significant compliance risk. And I'm going to talk about what those, some of those risks are as we move forward. And they interfere with your ability to capitalize on acquisition investment. Companies spend a lot of time before, and I'm going to talk about the bit before, uh, on just preparing for these acquisitions or selling or divesting of properties or of information and their uh, processes. So we're going to talk throughout this process around what happens before an acquisition or a divestiture, what happens during and then after. Okay. And pardon my back here, you guys. I, sorry for that. So before is you, we need to know what we're getting into. Who's done divestitures and acquisitions? Lots of us. No kidding. And sometimes we don't know they're coming because of confidentiality. Or sometimes we do. We can prepare for them. But most times we don't uh, get a heads up. Right? So what we recommend is you perform a full audit of the vendor's records holdings and practices. And sometimes we don't always have that opportunity. But again, it's your records management program. If you're visible in the organization, they will include you in this process. So that's, that's the start of it. So you're starting to pull information for data rooms, for due diligence, for buyers looking at your information, that kind of thing. So you, they have to have the information to be able to sell it. Okay. So an audit will reveal previously unseen risks and it will opportunities for the buyer, right? Um, there's a lot of acquisitions and divestitures that don't go through because once they see the information, the process is the information, they have a choice of whether they want to buy or not. And, and probably, I'm estimating maybe three out of 10, they won't buy okay. if they don't see the value. So privacy and compliance. So you can't control what information other companies collect. Don't we know that? <laughs> So we inherit other companies' files, records. Uh, we don't know what kind of shape they're in. Uh, we don't know if they've had a records management program. You know, again, if you can find out some of this stuff up front, it makes your jobs much easier. Correct? Yeah. Um, some of the things that companies may collect that we aren't aware of around compliance 
is back when I worked in the oil and gas industry, and I'm talking several years ago, we used to collect uh, medical information on, on, on HR files. They don't do that today. So that's a risk. Um, so, but if you're inheriting company records and it's a full acquisition, you may have those types of records that are still uh, in the retention uh, requirements to hold and you've got that information, that privacy information that you, you are going to be accountable for. So you want to watch for those types of things. That's just a quick example. Uh, other examples are expense accounts. We've all had to deal with those with our accounting systems. There's lots of privacy information on those. Um, SIN numbers, visa numbers, all of that information. And again, as records managers and with privacy, we got to ensure that if we inherited those types of records that we manage them properly. Okay. So that records audit should locate and identify all inappropriate personal information and plan for its secure disposal. And when I say plan for that disposal is you may be inheriting records that have already met retention and the company that you bought uh, never disposed of it. Could have been for tax purposes, legal purposes, or they just never had time. Um, so you need to review those records and make sure that you're not accountable. And if they have come up for retention, then you want to make sure that you dispose of them. Okay. So these are all just things that we need to think about when we inherit uh, all these records through an acquisition. I don't want to harp on privacy, but it's really important today. Um, we have lots of standards out there that we have to follow. Um, in Canada, it's a Personal Information Protection Act. Uh, in the U.S., the Health Insurance Portability Accountability Acts. Uh, even if you're dealing in uh, international, then there's the European Union Acts around privacy. So you have lots of homework to uh, check on if you haven't dealt with those types of records before. So if you're just Canadian operations and you inherit U.S. and international uh, holdings, then you need to understand those records and make sure that you are protecting them and that you understand those records that, that you are, are getting. So any business acquired will be subject to a host of legal requirements pertaining to those records. So when you buy a company, you're directly liable for anything that other company did, okay? Um, so I think in a lot of cases that we don't understand that. So when you inherit those records, whatever is going on at that time and they've sold it, whether it's a litigation, uh, you inherit all that, uh, those headaches, okay? So you may have to pull and, and keep records separate for litigation, keep records separate for uh, tax purposes, uh, or again, you may just need to uh, keep records aside for review, okay, and understand, you know, what you're inheriting. So this is the big one, cost. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> But I've always been a true believer in records management is that we have a very important job to do when we um, go through an acquisition or a divestiture. Um, it always seems that from the top down, the top goes out and gets the deals and makes the deals and then we're left to deal with it. <laughs> Everybody's shaking their heads. Been there, done that. Um, so it's important um, to do that audit uh, to protect your investment and and when I say an audit and uh, TAB has done some assessments and we have some audit tools that um, that we have on our website so if you're interested in any of those you can take a look at it um, it helps you ask the right questions up front what you need to kind of audit and make sure that you're getting as part of the receiver of that data um, and then we're all going I'm also going to talk to you about the agreement that's made between companies So you need to analyze each of those records collections. Uh, you need to know what equipment, supplies are coming, right, to manage those records. You even need to know what staff you're inheriting or what's, you know, who's coming over if, if they are, if you have a say in that. Sometimes you don't have a say. Okay. 
You need to review service level agreements, very important, affecting those storage of records. So that's, uh, when I talk about records, and I'm sorry I didn't say it up front, we're talking everything from active to inactive to electronic, right? That's what you inherit. So a preliminary audit will show those significant risk exposures, okay? So an example of that is in the oil and gas industry, as much as we like well files to be standardized, <laughs> and we think most, most of us think they are, well, they're not. So you got to know if, I'm just saying maybe one, one customer may put their well licenses in the well file or they may file them separately. That's just an example. Okay, so you need to know where the complete file is, where the complete information is because it's no good to your users if they can't find it. Okay. So that's part of that analysis that needs to be done um, when you receive that information. Do you have complete records? Okay. Once records move in custody of the buyer, it is time to confront these head on. You're right. Um, some of those uh, provisions I'm just going to mention is in this stage here. So you've got the intake assessment when you receive the information, right? So what's important there is that you need to make sure you've got a list of all the files that were received, make sure you have a manifest of what the company sent over, you know, that's your checklist. Uh, we have all done it, all been there. But these are important steps to take when, when you are receiving information or even when you're divesting information is those inventories are what's most important. File integrity cleanup. Um, companies don't take the time to do this and unfortunately if you're selling properties is you really want to um, look at those records before they go out, do a cleanup of them, could be personal notes in them, could be you know the duplicates, the um, miss files, all those types of things. And we don't always have time to do that. So then we receive them if we're an acquisition. So we receive files that are misfiled, have duplicates in them, um, are generally a mess. And that's not because of the records management programs. Sometimes it's just lack of resources to be able to do it or, or time uh, sensitivity or um, again, not knowing in advance that, that a company is being sold or, or documents or records are being sold. Okay. Everything's time sensitive in records management. <laughs> um, and sometimes uh, we think bad filing um, practices are done at other companies, but you know that's part of your having a good records management program. Is if you can prevent that when there's an acquisition or a divestiture, if you can do that as part of your day-to-day -day routine, and continue with making sure that you have a good paper file system or you have standard uh, indexing systems, standard file plans throughout your program. Um, you know, in your electronic records that you have a. Uh, standard naming conventions and I know people are shaking their heads and thinking you know we some of you may have it some of you may not and it takes a long time to get there but if those records are in good order and they're sold or they're coming to you wouldn't our lives be much easier <laughs> so the file conversion side of uh, inheriting records this is where we need money we need resources um, I mentioned the agreement. Uh, when companies uh, from the top are selling uh, processes and are selling uh, uh, information and records, is as records managers, we can ask to see that agreement and we can also ask that there's monies put in there for us to be able to do, do the work afterwards. And most companies do have it and, and most of us don't know it's there or our managers don't know it's there. So that's why I recommend that you ask to see the agreement. 
or if you have a good relationship with your land departments that are mostly it's them that's selling these properties off or selling um, opportunities then they will make sure that there's room for records management to be able to do the work after the acquisition or the divestiture okay you need money to be able to do this and when I say that it's because you need resources so file conversions you don't want to end up with two or three different file collections. Uh, your users have problems with that. They don't know where to find information. They don't know where to look. They don't, you know, they need it right away to do their jobs. Um, so it's very important that they have access to that information as fast and efficiently as possible. So that's really the selling point is to be a competitive company even after an acquisition or when you're selling off properties is that you need to be able to access that information. Okay. That goes for different um, electronic uh, records management systems too. You may inherit one from one company, it's not the one you use. Um, that's very common. So it's really some decision making as to what is the best system to go with when you have a merge like that. Um, Sometimes it's not going with what you have or the other company. It could be just looking at a whole new opportunity. Um, maybe your systems are too small, and now that you've uh, merged two companies together, then you need something larger. So, yes. And that, that's something that we've really found in our company is the importance, like you were saying, of being involved or at least being able to see that PNS agreement. Yeah simply because of the fact that you might be able to know what kind of system you have compared to the company that you're selling to. And the problem being there is that maybe that PNS agreement, they, the other company might say, well, I don't want your records in that electronic system because we don't use it. So then maybe what has to happen is they all have to be printed off because they haven't even gone electronic yet. So you have to have that money in there so that you can. We had a situation where I read the P&S agreement on one sale that we were doing, and it was a major sale. And we found out that we were selling to two different companies. And in it, it just said that they would receive the information. So I went to the A&D team, because we actually have a whole team in, in our company. And I said to them, does that mean that each partner is going to get a copy? And they said, oh yes. And I said, do you know how many? Like we were talking thousands of wells. Mm -hmm. I had to bring seven people in for three months to photocopy every single well file that we had. So that both, but if I had never read that PNS agreement, yeah. we would not have been prepared when they closed the deal. So it's really yeah. important if you can to get involved in your A&D team yep. and say, I would like to be there, I'd like to see that agreement. Sorry, I just wanted to no, bring No, thank you, because um, I wanted to stress that also, that um, that's what helped me through uh, the years, through uh, sales and divestitures and property sales, was really being able to be part of that A&D group and, and when it was time to do that, and to do that due diligence and look at that agreement and see how does records management fit in there and what are we getting. Yes. What's also important about being able to make copies is whether or not the electronic records are complete records or there's a mixture of electronic and hard copy. Yeah. And then yes. being able to, to import or export uh, the proper file formats. Yes. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very tricky. Very tricky. Yeah. Great. Any other comments at this time? Uh, so we talked about file conversion, um, deployment. Again, that's um, another important activity because, again, as I mentioned, your users need access to that information ASAP, right? They're at your door. They're asking for files. They're signing them out before you even have a chance to convert them. Um, you know, they're more important than uh, what you're doing. So it's really important also through that process of deployment is making sure that you know where those records are at all times. Um, make sure that, you know, when you have your teams together doing your uh, conversions, that you have a beginning and an end 
because sometimes that doesn't happen. Or, um, some of these file conversions, you get busy doing other things, they don't, it doesn't get done. So it's very important to make sure that you have good uh, backup for money to do these conversions and also the resources to do them in a timely fashion. Okay. Then we talk about training because any records, conversions that you do, um, your users need to be retrained. Okay. Even if you're still using your system, sometimes you're coming across people that have never used your system in your company and they need access to those records now. So it's retraining, new training, um, communication, make sure, and that's not up there, make sure communication is out that you have these records and they are available to your users. Okay. So what happens after? Um, I think I already mentioned it, there's, you know, your integration of the new records is critical um, because people need them on a day-to-day -day basis, they need them right away, so it's critical that you finish those uh, file conversions and have the information available to them. Even if you're not converting, you need to get them up on the shelf, you need signage, you need, um, you know, some sort of a way, right away to have access to that information, okay? Avoid the temptation of maintaining two or more separate systems, and we've talked about that, whether that's paper or electronic, um, because it causes confusion uh, and also risk of not finding information. Okay. Um, there wasn't really much up there, um, so I just kind of added some of these steps, and, and we've really talked about them as as I went through this. So, you know, again, obtain lists of records being divested. You have access to that. Again, the agreement you have access, you can ask for those lists. It's your check off for coming in or if you're, sorry, if you're sending out records. So usually your IT department or uh, someone will provide you or your A&D team will provide you those lists when you're divesting. And again, you need to gather records from all sources. Sometimes we tend not to, sometimes we tend not to um, go to inactive and look for records because we don't know what's in our inactive records, right? So uh, we don't usually come across those types of records till we pull the box and then we realize it's a sole property. Uh, what do we do with it? So you can either sell it, send it to the new the purchaser, uh, or you send it to your A and D team and let them manage it. <laughs> Another thing, Brenda, that I found when obtaining lists of records yep. being divested, make sure that you're divesting 100 percent. You of know, that. and I put that here. It's very important. Cause it's very important because <laughs> I found that out. Because especially when you're dealing with facilities, is you know sometimes what happens on that PNS agreement is just saying we're selling that compressor, we're selling that plant, we're selling whatever. But what they fail to say is sometimes on that PNS agreement it'll say that we have 56% ownership of it or you know we operate it. But they fail to tell you whether or not you're selling all of it. Sometimes we're only selling maybe 30% of it. So we still need to keep a record. So that's really important. I found that out the hard way. So just to <laughs> You know, and that's such a good point because um, I've also found that when I manage seismic data, you know, again, they thought they own the data, no warranty work done, and it wasn't even our data, you know. Yeah. So um, that's really important to check. So thank you for bringing that up. So one other piece, so you can be retaining liability, at least in Canada, yeah. without having the ownership. So it's right. not just all, it's not all about ownership. Yeah. There's also a liability piece. So that's yes, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. To watch out for. Yeah. The other thing about um, everything that we talked about is confidentiality, right? So when we talk about acquisition, divestiture, and we're involved in records management, we're always asked if we, if we know about it to keep it confidential because that's, that's a risk too, that you don't want that information or, the, or uh, outside companies or even employees knowing that something like that is going on. 
Um, so to go back to this, sanitize prior to sending records to purchaser. When I say sanitizing, that was what I mentioned earlier about cleaning up those files. You get personal notes on it. You may get duplication. Um, just information you don't want the purchaser to see or have. So that's part of the sanitizing of the records. This is another thing that we don't take time to do is update our current systems to show that a property or, or records have been sold. That's really important. It saves you lots of time and energy looking for information. You know, we do the work and sometimes don't update our systems to say we pro you know, it's been sold and we have people looking for it. Right? So a very important step. Um, box files you know, to make sure that there's uh, an inventory of what you're sending out in a divestiture, make sure that there's a manifest, make sure that they're signing for the files that they got there to the, to the uh, purchaser. All those things are really important. And take time and resources. So in conclusion, um, I just want to mention that records support the business and business is about people. So I mentioned confidentiality. What's really important when you're selling or acquiring companies is people are stressed during that time. <laughs> Not just records management, everybody's stressed. So the confidentiality for us as records professionals, making sure that we're not talking about what we're doing uh, you know, outside of our, um, our areas or, you know, I've heard, I've ther I've heard acquisitions in, you know, talk in elevators and, you know, on the street, you know, it doesn't take long to get out there. We're such a small community. So when we talk about, you know, the mergers, the acquisitions, divestitures, it's just keep that in mind. So just in conclusion, I just want to mention that all of these practices, we meet the goals of the organization when we're managing the data properly and you can make your company more competitive, okay? once those records are organized and part of your records management program.